This video tutorial deals with simple stoichiometry, but before we start, make sure you have a pretty good understanding of nomenclature, uh, writing out the chemical formulas, and also writing out chemical names. You should also have a pretty good understanding of the different types of chemical reactions and their patterns, such as single displacement, uh, double displacement, synthesis, decomposition, and also complete and incomplete combustion. All right, so let's get started. What mass of product can be produced when 5 grams of aluminum reacts completely with excess oxygen? So the first step is write out the chemical equation and balance it. So we're reacting aluminum, Al, with excess oxygen. And this will produce a chemical compound. Now, looking at aluminum, there is no other element bonded to it right now, so I don't have to follow the zero-sum rule. And since aluminum is not a uh, diatomic element, I don't have to put any subscripts in, so it's stable. It's good to go. Oxygen, on the other hand, is a diatomic element. So if you recall, the diatomic elements are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. These seven elements are diatomic meaning that if they are alone, and oxygen is alone right now, unbonded to another atom, uh, if they are alone, then they are unstable. And so the only way to stabilize them is to put a 2 here. So meaning that they are diatomic, di meaning 2, atomic meaning atoms, two atoms bonded together for stability. Now that we've stabilized the left side, the reactant side of the reaction, uh, let's go on to the product side. So looking at the product side, it says that it's producing some sort of product. It doesn't actually mention what it is, and this is where your knowledge of... Uh, types of chemical compounds or types of chemical reactions rather and their patterns comes in handy. So looking at this it follows the synthesis reaction pattern where a simple element bonds with another simple element to form a larger compound. So I follow the pattern aluminum plus the oxygen slam them together and there is my new compound. Now having followed the pattern by slamming the two elements together I now need to add in the subscripts. To do this, we uh, follow the zero-sum rule and look up the valence charges for each element. So aluminum has a valence charge of 3 plus. So I'll tack on a 3 plus over here for rough work. Oxygen, on the other hand, is a valence charge of 2 minus. So I'll place a 2 minus above over here. According to the zero-sum rule, uh, the net charge for this compound must add up to zero in order for it to be uh, considered to be stable. So right now this compound ALO is unstable. So there's no point in using this in my chemical reaction right now because it doesn't exist. So to stabilize it, I'll put a 2 over here for a subscript and a 3 over here. So now I have 3 times negative 2 equals negative 6. 2 times positive 3 equals to positive 6. If I add these two up, I get a net charge of 0, which means this compound is now stable. So let me get rid of this rough work. And there we have our reaction. Now the important thing about uh, stoichiometry is to make sure that your chemical reaction is balanced. That's where we get our original set of ratios from. So be sure to balance your equations at all times. Never, never, never leave your equation unbalanced. So here I've balanced it. 2 times 2, 4 aluminums, 4 aluminums. 3 times 2, 6 oxygens, 2 times 3, 6 oxygens, so everything's all balanced. Now what I'd like to do next is organize the information that I have uh, into my reaction over here. So it says here that I have 5 grams of aluminum, so I'm just going to write down 5 grams of aluminum. And it says that it reacts completely with excess oxygen gas. Now the word excess basically means as much as I want, so I'll put an infinity sign here to show that I have as much oxygen as I want. So really this reaction ends once I run out of aluminum. So the 5 grams is what determines how much I can create. The oxygen, I've got all the oxygen in the world that I need, so that's not going to determine how much a uh, product I will make. And of course the question is asking what mass of the product am I looking for? So I'll write down mass equals I have no clue. So I want to find the mass of aluminum oxide. Now, before we continue on with this question, let's take a little detour. To understand why we need the mole, let's take a look at this, uh, well, recipe slash equation over here. I have burger buns, I have a burger patty, so the beef, and I make a burger. 
Now, looking at this equation, it's not complete. I need to balance it. So looking at the final product, I need two burger buns, one burger beef to make one burger. Now, let's pretend I have six burger buns over here. How many beef patties would I need to match up all the burger buns so I wouldn't have anything left over? Well, it's a two to one ratio, so therefore it should be half as much. Three beef, right? So six buns matched with three beef patties should be able to give me three burgers. So hopefully by now uh, you've noticed that as long as I have the balanced ratios, the balanced equation, these uh, stoichiometric ratios at the top, it doesn't matter which value I'm given here, I can use it to solve for the missing values. So for this example, I gave you the original six buns, and you were able to tell me how many, three, how many, how many beef patties were necessary, and how many burgers you could make from that. So if I give you a number like four dozen beef patties, well, you can tell me how many dozen buns are going to, need, are going to be needed. Just by comparing to the original ratio. So for instance, there's a one to two ratio between beef to buns. So that means there's going to be twice as many buns. Well, twice as many of four dozen would be eight dozen buns over here. And since the beef to the hamburger ratio is one to one, therefore this should be four dozen. So as long as I give you one value over here, it doesn't matter which of the three, and as long as you have the original balanced equation, balanced ratios, you can solve for the other two missing numbers. We can do the same with freakishly large numbers. So for instance, if I have five trillion beef patties, well, how many trillion buns will I need? Twice as much. Ten trillion. Or over here, same amount. Since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, well, it's going to be five to five. So five trillion beef or hamburgers are going to be created. And similarly, we can also use the mole. So if I have three mole of beef or hamburgers, well, then how many mole of beef patties will I need? Well, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so three mole. And it's a one-to-two ratio, so twice as many. So that's going to be six mole. Now, what happens if I'm given a mass instead? So for instance, if I have 8 grams of buns, well, according to my ratio, it's going to be half as much since this is a 2 to 1 ratio, it should be 8 to 4 ratio. And over here, 1 to 1, 1 to 1 should be a 4 grams over here. But take a look at this. This doesn't make any sense. How is it possible to have 8 grams of buns plus 4 grams of beef and then have only 4 grams of burgers in the end? That, that doesn't make sense. It's supposed to be 12 grams of hamburgers anyway in the end but that would not match up with my ratio anymore. So as you can see, going, uh, putting ratios and putting mass into ratios does not work out. This just messed things up. It doesn't make any sense at all. So we must remember that mass cannot be placed into stoichiometric ratios. We need to convert the mass into something else, like moles, where moles do work. Because we're talking about individual units of uh, well, ingredients and also reactants or products in the end. So what we really need to do is convert the mass into how many buns is that? We need to convert the beef into how many beef patties do I have? And then convert this into how many hamburgers will I have? So numbers work in the ratios, they are fine, but mass values do not work with ratios. All right, so now that we know we can't use our ratios to solve directly from mass into a mass, can't go this route because it doesn't make any sense, we need to take a little detour into the land of the mole. So once we convert the five grams of aluminum into moles, now we can go and do our ratios and find out the number mole of aluminum oxide we're going to produce. From there, we can pop back up out of the land of the mole into the land of mass and find our final answer from there. So it's a slight little detour that we're taking. Because we can't go the direct route, it doesn't make any sense, we will take a detour into the land of the moles, set up our ratios, then pop back out. Okay, so now that we have our game plan, well, let's do it. To find the mole of aluminum, we follow the equation mole is equal to mass over molar mass. So the mass of aluminum divided by the molar mass of aluminum. In this case over here, the mass of aluminum happens to be 5 grams. So I'll write down 5 grams. And the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams per mole. 
which equals to 0 0.185 mole, approximately. So with this number in hand, let's plug it in here, 0 0.185 mole of aluminum. The next step is to set up our ratios to find out how many moles of aluminum oxide I'm going to produce. Just like how we were able to predict using only one number and also these initial ratios, how much of the beef of hamburgers I'm going to make and how much beef I'm going to need, I can do the exact same thing. I have 0.185 moles of aluminum and I have these initial ratios so I can find out how much aluminum oxide I'm going to produce. Obviously the numbers aren't as nice and pretty and round like 422 as they are in this example. Instead, we're going to have ugly numbers like 0 0.185 mole, and we're going to try and find out how many beef hamburgers we're going to make. Or in this case, how much aluminum oxide I'm going to make. Now here's how I like to set up my ratios. I usually put what I want at the top and what I'm looking, what I have anyway, at the bottom. What I mean is, since I'm looking for the aluminum oxide, I'm going to put it at the top, numerator. Since I have information about the aluminum, I'm going to put in the denominator at the bottom. And since it's equal sign, do the exact same on either side. Now, the first set of ratios is your original ratios. Where do you get it from? Well, your balanced equation. So the ratio for uh, aluminum oxide to aluminum is 2 to 4. So I write down 2 to 4, because there's two aluminums for every four, I mean, sorry, two aluminum oxides for every four aluminum. On the right-hand side, I like to set up my new ratio. So what am I trying to find? Now, since I'm trying to find how much, how many mole of aluminum oxide, I'm going to solve for X, basically. And since I have information about the aluminum, 0 0.185, I'm going to write it down here, 0 0.185. All right, so it's very important to set up your ratios properly. Uh, aluminum oxide at the top, aluminum at the bottom, 2 to 4 ratio, X to 0 0.185. Now, this looks pretty complicated, so I'm just going to erase the unnecessary information you don't need right now. And we're left with a simple algebraic expression. So to isolate for the x variable, I multiply by 0 0.185 over here. And therefore, 0 0.185 divided by 0 0.185 cancels out to give a 1. But if I do uh, multiplication on this side, I have to do the exact same thing on this side in order to be the same. So I multiply by 0 0.185 as well. So I remove what we canceled. And we are left with x is equal to 2 times 0 0.185 divided by 4. And so x equals to 0 0.0925. And I can remove this and replace it with the 0 0.0925. 0 0.0925 represents how much aluminum oxide in moles that I will create. Now it's just a matter of converting from the moles back into a mass. For this, we rearrange the original equation, moles equal to mass over molar mass, and algebraically rearrange it so that mass is equal to moles times molar mass. So that's 0 0.0925 moles times the molar mass of aluminum oxide, which is 101.96 grams per mole, and that equals to 9.43 grams. So we'll erase this and replace it with 9.43 grams, and we are done. Now, a common error that many students will make uh, during stoichiometry questions is the calculation of the molar mass. So, for instance, over here, uh, the aluminum oxide, when calculating its molar mass, it should be two aluminums, two aluminums, added on to three oxygens. So, three oxygens. And that should, if you add them all up, sum up to 101.96 grams per mole. Where students will go wrong is, they'll see the coefficient, the number two over here, and then so they'll multiply this number times 2. That will end up giving you twice the number or that you're supposed to be getting. Do not multiply by the coefficient, uh, in this case which is a 2, because that's already been taken care of when you did your ratios. Right? When we did our ratios, we took that or into, uh, we factored that in already by looking at the coefficients. So don't do it twice. That will double your amount or half the amount depending on what the coefficient is in the front. So when calculating molar mass, do not factor in the coefficient that has already been dealt with with the ratios. Instead, uh, concentrate on just the subscripts and this part over here, and you should be good to go.